Hey ya, it's Snacks and welcome back to my channel. So this is the last build update video before the actual build video. Now Kratos is over here at the back and he's ready. He's a monster and I can't wait for you guys to see him. But today I did use some footage from my build where I deleted a CPU. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Quick audible on this bill, we are going to be using the 13900KS, a brand new 13900KS. So why don't we go ahead and live life on the edge, void their warranty, and delete it. So if you're using a 12th gen CPU, you see these screws, you leave them in. But if you're using a 13th gen CPU like what I'm going to be using, you're going to want to take these screws out. Okay, now, now that that's out of the way, you notice how the CPU has a triangle icon on one of its corner. You're going to want to match this triangle, number one triangle on your deleting tool, which is right over here. So let me just take my CPU like so, and I'm going to place it on my deleting tool. Next, you're going to want to take this part of your deleting tool and make sure that the number one etch on this side is matching, is facing up and is matching the number one side on your other deleting tool. Okay. Lastly, we're going to screw it in. Now, you're not going to want to screw it in firmly but not tightly. So just a little bit right there. So now what we want to do is we want to loosen up the adhesive by putting heat down to it. So you could use a hair blow dryer or a heat gun. Um, we're just going to do it the way they did in EK's video and we're going to place it in an oven at 155 degrees Fahrenheit for half an hour. You want to taste my special recipe for a deleted CPU? Mmm, <laughs> yummy. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so I just took it out of the oven because it's been about half an hour. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to screw it all the way in. Alright. Screwed it all the way in now. Now let's unscrew it. Alright, so see how it kind of moved up? That's what you want to see. Okay, so now we're going to uh, turn our CPU 180 degrees so that our triangle is adjacent to the number two triangle position, which is right over here. So because this is really important, I'm just going to say that one more time. Um, you always want to make sure that the triangle on your CPU always matches the triangle on your slider. It, if it doesn't match up, you could potentially screw up your CPU. So here, just one more time, you see how the number two triangle is over here and the CPU triangle is right over here? You want to make sure that lines up. You want to quadruple check that. So, okay. Just did that in perfectly and now we're going to... So essentially what you're doing is you're moving the IHS back and forth and loosening it up. So look how easy it is and that's because we've already loosened it up. Now we're just going to do this a couple more times. And make sure then there shouldn't be that much resistance on it. If you guys can uh, feel resistance, make sure you guys aren't threading your CPU. Notice how it's back in the position. Now we're just gonna put it back again in number one. So triangle in position one. So what does that mean? Slider is also gonna be in position one. Mm. 
Again, smooth like butter. Practically no resistance. Oops. Smooth like butter. Taking it off again. So, I believe we're about four or five passes through. Let's just do one more. Okay, so we're flipping the CPU again, where the triangle is facing the number two. So we're gonna flip our cider to face number two as well. And we're just gonna do one last pass. Smooth like butter, pretty much no friction. Okay. Loosen that up. Okay. So what we're essentially doing is just we're we keep moving the top part of the CPU, the lid of the CPU, up, down, up, down, up, down. We're kind of shimmying it out of there. We're shimmying out the lid. So, back to normal. So let's just do... The number one pass again. So triangle, number one, flipping the slider to where the number one is facing us. Good. Now we're just taking it out and now we're gonna take off the lid. So notice how I have the floss at the sides of the lid of the CPU and I don't, I make sure not to go in the middle at the Indian part. Um, that's because I just want to touch the adhesive around it and make sure that there's no adhesive that's still sticking together. You want to make sure that the indium is the only thing that's left. Okay, so if you got all the sides properly, it should just pop right off. Oh yeah. Oh, it's moving. Oh, yep, it's done. All right, guys, so we have successfully deleted our CPU. This is the lid, it's gone, it's off. Next step is we're gonna clean it all up. Okay, so I squirted some liquid metal on the indium. We're gonna clean that up. Let's just add a little bit more. And then we're gonna let it work its magic. There, we flatten it up a bit. And then we could let it work its magic. Okay, so we're just gonna let that sit in and oh by the way guys You want to make sure when you're doing a project like this that you don't use a towel because you want to avoid the static that comes with the towel I do have an anti-static spray around here and which I use on this towel. So I'm pretty confident that there's no static um, But just as a general rule of thumb you would want to avoid using towels in this type of workspace And the reason for that is because you want to avoid the charge that comes with those towels. So yeah just as an FYI. I think this is good enough. Maybe let's try.
making some progress, albeit it's slow. <sighs> okay, so I'm done. That took a long time, probably around an hour, but it's worth it. I'm happy. So I took out the adhesive, adhesive, all the adhesive at the side. Now you guys may be able to see some indium stains on the dye, but that's okay. It's normal as long as the surface is flat and smooth and you're good to go. But I'm actually going to polish up the dye a little bit to get that mirror finished. So let's go do that. What's up you guys, it's a new day. So yesterday I had a bit of a slight hiccup. My camera died on me and I didn't even notice because I was so intent on cleaning up my PCB. But you guys didn't miss much. Like I said, all I did yesterday was clean up my PCB and I even cleaned up the dye so that it has this mirror-like finish to it. So this is what it looks like. So now we're gonna install the kit onto the motherboard. Before I put on the liquid metal onto the die, I did one extra helpful step. So I used normal thermal paste as a test to accomplish two goals. One is to make sure that the block makes good contact with the die, and two is to use the imprint as a guide to mark off where the die makes contact. Once I mark it off, I clean up the thermal paste and add the liquid metal. All right, and that's all there is to it. I'll see you guys on the next video. Again, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.